Hi Tiffany, I was just catching up on the extraordinary adventures of Baron Munchausen. I always feel rejuvenated by a touch of adventure. As you know, I will be doing a panel at PAX about language and gaming. One of our main arguments is that language enriches the gaming process by taking advantage of the games and the narratives that they create. And, and that's what I love most about gaming is that it, you can take this idea that somebody had and turn it into just this amazing experience that whisks you away. When telling stories, in my experience, I find that a modicum of snuff is most efficacious. There are other games that might not be so obvious but still have a profound story to tell. For example, Polterfoss. When you take on the role of the barmaiden and all your opponents are betting on whether or not you're going to be able to fill your order or not based on the way you roll your barrels. Oh my god, when I was the barmaid, man, I couldn't fill one order. With that in mind, I'm going to share something with you about how I game. And when I game, I usually role play. Yeah, hmm, well, I'm going to tell you the stories of some games as if I were a character in those games. And I apologize in advance, so bear with me. The problem with Americans is that they need some kind of Cthulhu or rocket ship or something ridiculous to keep their interest. They don't believe that there is a story to be told in the building of railroads. In fact, the building of Russian railroads. And the story here is about hard work and dedication and how the railroad builds you as you make a stronger, more powerful line and connect cities throughout Russia. It's basically a work replacement game. The great thing about Russian railroads is that it's building railroads, but not in an obvious way. There is no huge map with 47 million routes on them, no. In fact, there are three ways that you can build railroads. The story that this game tells is a good one because you talk about the development of railroads or the development or te of technology or if someone didn't get an engineer and then you can yell ha ha you suck. It's super fun and great so you should definitely play some Russian railroads. Yes? All right here's what's gonna happen. We are gonna get off this spaceship. We have been floating in space for days. I don't know. The point is there are aliens creeping about trying to kill us all. In fact, what we need to do is execute, escape from the aliens and out of space now. We need to get the hell off this boat. We've got aliens creeping in the night. We've got people trying to kill us, give away our position. That's no good, rookie, no good. And we all have our own little notepad telling us where we want to go. And we got to keep that secret. And we got to keep that safe. Because we don't want nobody knowing where we're going. I don't like two things. I don't like space and I don't like aliens. I want to be back on the ground in 0800 hours. Are you coming with me? Oh, Tiffany, I wish I could tell you that all board games are fun and have happy stories to tell, but that is not the case. In fact, some games are rooted in history, sad history, fiery history. In the Great Fire of London, 1666, in the real world, supposedly a baker left his oven light on when he left to go home for the night, which lit all of London on fire. But back then, living conditions weren't so great. There were just too many people. And naturally, fire starts to spread out. And what you do in the game then is you try to extinguish the fire, but also keep the fire away from your homes. Cause see, I'm a wealthy landowner, you are a wealthy landowner, trying to save our homes from the fire. And based on the way wind blows, which comes up on cards, you can make the fire go a different direction. It's always going to want to eat houses. I could just burn them all down if I wanted to. <laughs> And then of course you can use firemen to put out fires because that's their job. And this game tells the story and it ends friendships. We have some tea and go to bed. Oh, hello. Don't be shy. Come in. Let me tell your fortune. You're here for the Divinero contest, for the contest of mediums. Seers from all around have gathered to determine who is most in tune with their sixth sense. Who knows most accurately what's in their opponent's hands? I know who's gonna win. Do you? Well, now that I'm done, you know, acting, I can be back to my normal weird self. 
I'm not saying that everybody has to play their games this way, and if you don't play them this way, I hope that you at least take the time to retell them in such a way that is engrossing and makes people want to play the game. Um, I love really dry euros and I love just pushing things around the board. That's fine. But when I am talking to people about that game later, I'm not like, hey, I push these cubes around the board. No, I'm like, oh my gosh, I took my colonials up into the northeast and we just completely demolished the British. And it's just a better story to tell. If you guys are going to PAX, I will be in the cuttlefish room at six o'clock on Friday. And Tiffany, I hope you have fun in Europe and everybody else, you should come say hi or play a game if you happen to be a PAX. And I'll see you guys later.